So we and many others at the Harvard Stem Cell Institute have been generating models of human diseases using reprogramming. Uh, we take uh, skin cells from a patient and we introduce genes which turn those skin cells back to an embryonic state. And we generate then what's called an induced pluripotent stem cell. These iPS cells, as they're called, are then able to be coaxed to become any tissue. And in our laboratory, we're quite interested in diseases of the blood. So we take skin cells from lots of patients with immune deficiencies or various genetic kinds of bone marrow failure or sickle cell anemia, and we make iPS cells. Then we direct these iPS cells to become blood cells. This allows us to study the disease pathology in a dish. The hope is that we can use them to discover new drugs that might ameliorate the effects of the disease or perhaps actually generate rejection-proof tissues um, so we can give the patients back healthy cells. Now in this process, what we've learned is that the reprogramming itself may not be 100% complete. Some of the cells appear to retain a memory of the original tissue. And we've discovered this when we were making iPS cells from the same patient, uh, from their skin cells and their blood cells. And it turned out the iPS coming from blood actually made better blood than the iPS coming from skin. So we called this an epigenetic memory. Now, in just a random set of iPS cells or uh, iPS cells drawn from lots of different laboratories, this memory is not that apparent. In fact, there's a lot of variation from lab to lab in the way cells are generated. But within our own lab, under very controlled uh, conditions, we see this memory. It's part of the uh, experimental variation that, that creeps in when we're comparing the skin cells and the, and the blood cells. So we published a paper that reports on epigenetic memory. This followed an earlier paper we published uh, last year in Nature showing uh, very rigorously that this was seen when we made similar cells from the mouse. Um, it's important because scientists who are using these very powerful methods for disease modeling really have to know about some of the technical limitations of reprogramming. And we're all hoping to improve on the reprogramming methodology so that we can erase this memory. Now, maybe we can turn it to our advantage. Um, if pancreatic cells uh, can be reprogrammed and they show a tendency to differentiate back into pancreatic tissues, that may be an advantage for modeling diseases like diabetes, for instance. That may be relevant for making uh, and differentiating cells into neural lineages or, or blood lineages. But at the very least, it's important that scientists appreciate when there are technical limitations to reprogramming. And that's particularly concerning when you're trying to reprogram from difficult sources like specific tissues in, in the elderly.